if things like toiletries and cosmetics are taking over your bathroom and the collection just seems to keep expanding, it is time to reclaim this space and clear out the clutter. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and there are so many health and beauty products out there these days that you're probably trying new things on a semi-regular basis. Some of them you like, some of them you won't. But the result is that over time, your collection grows. Even if you try a new product and you're not keen on it, you don't want that money that you spend on it to go to waste. You tell yourself that you'll use it up over time or that you'll keep it as a backup just in case you run out of another product. And what happens is you just end up with a whole pile of backup stuff. But now imagine walking into your bathroom and all of your products are neatly organized and you know exactly where everything is and you're not wasting money on things that you're just not going to use. That is the vision that we are turning into reality today. It is day 12, hence the t-shirt, of the declutter challenge, clutter free in five. Have you subscribed yet? I am all about helping you to simplify and streamline your life and your home so that you have the time for what matters most to you. Now, these are products that most of us will use on a daily basis, or if not, at least on a very frequent basis. So if they are a mess, it just makes our morning routines take that much longer and be that much more frustrating. So grab a permanent marker, yes, <laughs> let's dive in. Now, because we are doing this in just five minutes, you are going to have to pick a category, toiletries, cosmetics, or healthcare. Healthcare being things like medication, vitamins, first aid. If you have a large collection of one of them, you could even subcategorize, so maybe focusing just on your facial skincare products or on your eye makeup. Pull it out, let's go through it with a beady, critical eye. Now, I am willing to bet good money that you have products in there that you bought or maybe were gifted or received in a subscription box or something that you don't really like and therefore do not use. I like to call them in a pinch products because you keep them to use in a pinch if one of your other products runs out and you don't have time to go to the store, things like that. So make a choice right now. You can either commit to using up that thing, and maybe it's a shampoo that you don't really like, commit to using it until the bottle is empty, or just give up the ghost and let it go. I know it can feel like such a waste, maybe it's a big bottle and you've used a tiny amount out of it, but give serious consideration to donating it to a women's shelter. There will be somebody else who will love that product, who could really use that product and really enjoy that product. Don't let it just sit around gathering dust and taking up space on your bathroom counter or in your shower when somebody else could be getting value out of it, real value. Now for the stuff that's left, ask yourself how often you use it. You may have something that maybe you only use on an occasional basis, maybe seasonal, could you survive without it? Chances are you could, or do you have a similar product that could just as easily fill in? Why keep two products when one will do the job just as well? And let's be real, if you're only using it on an occasional basis, chances are it has expired or will expire before you get to use it again. So while we're on the topic of expiry dates, Let's talk about those. If you know that something has expired, get rid of it. I know that may sound really obvious, but if you have a large collection maybe of cosmetics, it's very easy to overlook things, particularly if they're at the back or you only use them on an occasional basis. Now there will be some products that have a very specific expiry date written on them and there will be other products that do not. For the products, particularly medication, that have expiry dates on them, what I like to do is actually take a permanent marker and write it in big numbers because very often the expiry date is teeny tiny and can be easily overlooked. So I write the expiry in big numbers on the top of the box somewhere I can see it at an easy glance and that way I will know immediately 
whether or not that product has expired. Also, the next time you're going through your medication, it will just make it that much easier to make those decisions because you don't have to be squinting looking for the little dates. It will be much easier to pick things out. Okay, that's for things that do have expiry dates on them. But what about things that do not have expiry dates on them? Very often, particularly with creams and lotions, things like that, you will find that there is a little icon on them. It is a picture of an open tub and either in it or beside it will be written a number and the letter M. So if you've got something that has 12 M written on it, that means that once you open it, it is only good for 12 months. And after that, it has expired. But it is the case that there will still be some products that have no indication on them, particularly for cosmetics. In that case, a quick search online will bring up a general guide of how long you should keep particular products. So once you open a new product, get into the habit of writing the expiry date on it. From the date you open it, count forward and write the expiry date on the product itself. If you can't write on it, just stick a little sticker, some washi tape, something like that, and write on that. Remember too that most of these products will go on sale at least once a quarter, particularly things like shampoos and shower gels. They are on regular sales, they are regular discounts. And if you're willing to shop around a little bit, you will probably find them on sale somewhere at all times. So for example, if you buy a shampoo, you know that in three to four months time, it's going to go on sale again you know that you'll only need to buy enough to get you through to the next sale period. So you don't need to start bulk buying and taking up all of the precious real estate on your counters. Okay, then let's talk about storage and organization. You are going to put similar products together. You're going to categorize them, but put the things that you do not use on a very regular basis somewhere out of the way. So if you have got a seasonal eye palette, something like that. I don't know. I don't really wear makeup. So, but don't keep those things in with your regular everyday makeup. Put them somewhere out of the way, in a drawer or even, you know, at the back. Don't have them getting in the way of the stuff that you actually use on a much more regular basis. Also rotate the stuff so that the products that are going to expire soonest, those are the ones that you are using up first. Now, if you have a problem with things kind of spreading out all over your counters, use some form of tray or container to keep it all in one place. It looks a little bit nicer and it will be much easier then to notice when your collection is starting to get out of hand. If it outgrows the boundaries, that's when you need to start going through and pairing back again. Now, just in case you do keep your medications in the bathroom, I know a lot of people do, don't <laughs> stop that right now. Get them out, move them to a different area of your home. Medications are supposed to be kept in a cool, dry place. Your bathroom is not that place. Okay, and very briefly then at the end, let's talk about stemming the flow, stopping that collection from growing ever bigger. The first is something that has become very prevalent and very popular in recent times, and that is subscription boxes. If you have one, you've got multiple products coming to your home, every month or every quarter, consider canceling those. Unless you are genuinely using and loving all of the products that come, or maybe you're gifting them to friends or something, look very carefully at those subscription boxes and ask yourself if they're worth it. Also refuse samples unless you will genuinely use them. Maybe you carry some in your purse for like little touch ups or you use them for traveling. Also realize that no product is a miracle cure. Advertisers are paid good money to convince you that their product is going to make you look younger, it's going to make you feel fabulous, all of these things, when realistically, that's just not going to happen. If you have a good shampoo that you like, you know, that does great things to your hair, cleans it. Don't get sucked into that thing. You know, the grass is always greener. Don't get sucked into the mentality that this new wonder product is going to solve all of your problems. If you've got a good one, a good old reliable, then stick with it. And something that I used to find very helpful in the past, when I used to work in the health and beauty space, so I used to buy a lot of stuff that would, particularly when it was on offer, I'd end up buying it in bulk. I had staff discount. It worked out at you know pretty much nothing, but then my home was flooded and stuff that really I was never going to use. So what I found helpful back then was to write myself, instead of writing a shopping list of things that I needed, writing a do not need list. That way, the next time I was out, I would know immediately that no, I did not need more shower gel. 
if you follow these tips, it is going to be so much easier for you to access the stuff that you actually use and to stop buying the stuff that you don't. Next up then, we are going to be making a dreaded task a little more bearable. This is one of those categories where we're led to believe that we need 20 different products and they will all do different things when realistically one or two will do the job just fine. We are going to be decluttering your cleaning supplies and talking about two different ways that you can organize them. Be sure to subscribe so that you can learn how to simplify your life and get back to being happy. Grab me and a Slán!